Good morning. Today we're looking at Section 2, Derivatives Rules of Combinations of Functions out of Chapter 4, Symbolic Differentiation out of Business Calculus with Excel. We're continuing the project of Chapter 4, which is to build rules for symbolic differentiation of functions. Our basic idea is show the rule, show some example computations, give a justification for the rule, and then perhaps look at applications. The last time we looked at four basic rules, the derivative of a times x to the n was n times a times x to the n minus 1. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of a to the x is ln of a times a to the x. And the derivative of ln of x was 1 over x. We had different kinds of justifications for each of those rules. This time we're going to look at four rules for combinations of functions the derivative of a times some function is a times the derivative of that function. The derivative of taking f and either adding or subtracting g is taking the derivative of f and adding or subtracting the derivative of g. Where life gets interesting is if I take the product of two functions, the derivative of f times g is the derivative of f times the function g plus the function f times the derivative of g and the derivative of f divided by g is the derivative of f times the function g minus the function f times the derivative of g divided by the function g squared. As is normal practice, I'll follow the structure of the text, but do different examples. So the first rule we're looking at is that the derivative with respect to x of a times f of x is the derivative is a times the derivative with respect to x of f of x. So the derivative with respect to x of 7 times e to the x is 7 times the derivative with respect to x of e to the x, which is 7 e to the x. The derivative with respect to x of 6 times 1.05 to the x is 6 times the derivative with respect to x of 1.05 to the x. That's going to be 6 times ln of 1.05 times 1.05 to the x. And so our first rule is simply taking and multiplying by a constant. If I want to argument for that rule, I'm going to take a very geometric argument. If I have my favorite function f, and I compare it to a times f of x, I can do it with the same looking function and simply if these are ones I make that one and make that an A. And so I get the same looking slope but on a different scale and that's how I'm going to see it. If I want to see that the same looking slope has A times the rise because a unit on, this, on the right hand graph is a times the unit up and down on the left-hand graph. The other way of thinking of it is if I look at the derivative with respect to x of a f of x, that's the limit as h approaches 0 of a times f of x plus h minus a times f of x all over h, which will be a times the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h, which is a times the derivative with respect to x of f of x. And so that gives us the constant multiplication rule. 
The next rule I want to do is the addition and sum, the derivative with respect to x of f of x plus or minus g of x is the derivative with respect to x of f of x either plus or minus the derivative with respect to x of g of x. And so for an example, if I wanted to do that, if I was looking at the derivative with respect to x of 3x squared plus 5x minus x cubed, that's going to be the derivative with respect to x of 3x squared plus the derivative with respect to x of 5x minus the derivative with respect to x of x cubed. <coughs> I use the constant multiple rule and get that this is 3 times the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus 5 times the derivative with respect to x of x minus the derivative with respect to x of x cubed which is going to be 6x plus 5 minus 3x squared. And so this gets us from the monomial rule to a polynomial rule, where if I know how to take the derivative of x to the n, I can now take derivatives of any polynomial or any pseudo-polynomial. If I'm looking for justification, I can do a similar, similar process. The derivative with respect to x of f of x plus g of x is, by definition, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h plus g of x plus h minus f of x minus g of x all over h rearranging and breaking up terms. That's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x plus g of x plus h minus g of x all over h, which is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h plus the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h, which is simply the derivative with respect to x of f of x minus the derivative with respect to x of g of x. And so this is my sum and difference rule. It lets me get to easily doing polynomials or additions and subtractions. The next rule is the product rule that the derivative with respect to x of f of x times g of x is the derivative with respect to x of f of x times g of x, the function g of x, plus the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x times the function f of x. It's useful at this point to do an example where we know what's going to happen. And so I'm going to look at f of x equals x cubed and g of x equals x squared. Then f of x times g of x is x to the fifth. When I'm verifying rules, it's always useful to have one where I know what the answer is. This says the derivative with respect to x of x cubed times x squared 
is the derivative with respect to x of x cubed times the function x squared plus the derivative with respect to x of x squared times x cubed which will give me 3x squared times x squared plus 2x times x cubed which is going to be 3x cubed plus 2 sorry 3x to the fourth plus 2x to the fourth or 5x to the fourth which was the derivative of x to the fifth and so this verifies the rule works in the simplest cases To check rules, use functions, that can be done two ways. I find when I'm trying to remember rules, I don't not remember a rule entirely. I almost remember a rule and so it's useful to have something that I can check my format. Let's do another example of this. If I'm looking at the derivative with respect to x of x squared times 1.06 to the x, According to my formula, that's the derivative of x squared times 1.06 to the x plus x squared times the derivative of 1.06 to the x, which will be 2x times 1.06 to the x plus x squared times the natural logarithm of 1.06 times 1.06 to the x. When I look at my justification, I'm going to look at the change of f times g and see that when I look at it, if I have a box that's f of x by g of x, we'll have delta f and delta g and what I get is that delta of f times g is f times delta g plus g times delta f plus delta f delta g if I'm looking at the derivative, I want to have over a delta x on the bottom for everything. And it's pretty easy to see that when I break it up, it's pretty easy to see that when I break it up and take the limit as delta x approaches zero of delta f times g over delta x, that's the limit as delta x approaches zero of f delta g over delta x plus the limit as delta x approaches zero of g delta f over delta x plus the limit as delta x approaches zero of delta f times delta g over delta x. This portion is just going to be f prime. This portion is going to be g prime. And this is going to look like f prime times delta x, but delta x is going to 0. I mean delta g, but delta g is going to 0. So that part goes to 0. And so that gives me a justification of the product rule. The last rule I want to look at is the quotient rule. 
which is the derivative. The last rule I want to look at is the quotient rule, which is the derivative with respect to x of f of x over g of x, which is the derivative with respect to x of f of x times g of x minus the derivative with respect to x of g of x times f of x all divided by g of x quantity squared. The easiest case to look at is once again I'm going to look at monomials where I know the answer. I'm going to let f of x equal x cubed, g of x equal x squared, f of x over g of x is simply x, so I know how to find the derivative of this quotient by just saying the derivative of x is 1. I want to do it with the quotient rule. And my quotient rule says the derivative with respect to x of x cubed over x squared is x cubed prime times x squared minus x squared prime times x cubed all over x squared quantity squared. Well that's 3x squared times x squared minus 2x times x cubed all over x to the fourth. Doing a bit more simplification, I get that this is 3x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth over x to the fourth, which is x to the fourth over x to the fourth, which is simply 1. And so we already knew that f of x over g of x prime was equal to 1. And so we get the same answer both ways. It's worthwhile to do another example, one that's less immediate. If I'm looking at f of x equals 1.06 to the x and g of x equals x cubed, I'm interested in finding the derivative with respect to x of 1.06x over x cubed. That should be the derivative with respect to x of 1.06 to the x times x cubed minus the derivative with respect to x of x cubed times 1.06 to the x divided by x cubed squared. Some basic simplification gives me the ln of 1.06 times 1.06 to the x times x cubed minus 3x squared times 1.06 to the x divided by x cubed squared is x to the sixth, and that gives me my derivative. So this means we know how to take derivatives of any function that started with our basic elementary functions and is built up by multiplication by a constant, addition, and multi multiplication of two functions, and division. This gets us lots of functions that we can take the derivative of symbolically. Thank you.